Hey guys, just as a heads up, today is going to be more of a lesson than a tutorial, but it's an important lesson at that. We're going to be taking a look at the key differences between update, fixed update and late update mono behaviour events. We'll look at why they're useful and when's best to use them. So, let's get straight into it. This was something that I really struggled to get my head around when I first started Unity. I'd heard of fixed update and late update, but I never knew how to correctly use them. So I stuck with what I thought I knew best and put all of my code within the update method. This resulted in a lot of mistakes that didn't really make any sense to me. So we'll go ahead and start with the most common update method that all Unity developers know, and that is just the bog standard update. Now, update is your main workhorse. All of your game's logic that isn't frame rate dependent will stem from your script's update method. Now I say frame rate dependent because the way update works is it's called exactly once per frame. So if your game's running at 60 frames per second, update will be called 60 times in that second. 30 frames per second, it'll call it 30 times in that second, and so on. So if we take a look at our update test script here, we can see that all I'm doing is adding one to a counter every time we pass through update, and every one second I'm printing out that total and resetting our values. So if we just run this script, we can see that in the editor, uh, update calls per second is changing constantly, even though there's nothing really in our scene. Now this is perfectly normal, it's perfectly fine for most cases. A lot of calculations aren't based on frame rate, so it doesn't matter how many times update's called per second. But what if we're performing tasks that are frame rate dependent and would be affected by frame rate drops? the most important of those being physics calculations. So for example, say we had a ball that we want to move along in the environment via physics. We'd grab our rigid body component and add some sort of force to it. Now, if that force is calculated inside the update method, the frame rate of the game would be taken into consideration. Now, if that game's frame rate drops, there's going to be fewer physics calculation calls, resulting in our object behaving unexpectedly and possibly glitchy. So, this is where fixed update comes in. First of all, fixed update is actually called before our update method in the backend execution hierarchy. That's just something to keep in mind when structuring any of your logic. So, Fixed update is different to update in that it's called a guaranteed set number of times per second, so it isn't actually dependent on your game's frame rate. We can actually set how many times we want fixed update to be called if we go into Edit, Project Settings, Time, and then amend the fixed time step. Now, fixed time step is how many seconds Unity will wait in between your fixed update calls. So, as we can see, by default, Unity will wait 0.02 seconds, which is 20 milliseconds. This means that regardless of your game's frame rate, Unity will call fixed update on all of your game objects a total of 50 times per second going at regular intervals. So, based on this, we can actually have multiple fixed update calls within a single frame. Uh, this will occur when your frame rate is less than your fixed amount, in this case 50. Uh, on the flip side of that, if your frame rate is above 50, then sometimes some frames won't actually call fixed update at all. So if we were to put all of our physics calculations inside of fixed update, then we can rest assured that we'll have smooth, regularly updated physics actions. Basically, a good rule to go by is if you're using any form of physics in your game, so that's affecting a rigid body's force, torque, gravity scale, or even if you're ray casting, you should be doing all of these calls inside of a fixed update method. So if we just head back over into our test script, 
comment out update and uncomment fixed update, we can see that this time we're doing exactly the same as before, but this time we are actually going to minus one from our total print. The reason for this is this will counteract the fact that fixed update is called before update, which makes our total one more than it should be each frame, if that makes sense. So if we run our game now, we can see we have a steady stream of 50s appearing in our console window. So if we stop this and we can now test that this is exactly what it's doing. So if we head over to our settings and we set it to call every 10 milliseconds, we should get a steady stream of 100s in the console window. And we do. So finally, the last one we have is late update. Now late update is very similar to update. It's practically identical with one difference. We can guarantee that late update will be called after our update function is completed. So we can always guarantee that any calculations or functions called in our update method have successfully completed prior to late update being called. An example of where this would be extremely useful is custom camera controllers. We're going to want to make sure that our target object has completed its movements each frame before we commit to moving our camera to follow that object around. Doing it in the late update will result in smoother camera movements as we can guarantee our players or target objects exact position through any update movements or calculations. And just to test this, we can jump back over again into our test script. We'll comment out fixed update and put back in update and late update. Now when we run our game, we should see that both totals are fluctuating as they were before, but they're always going to be the same value. That's because update's called and then late update's called. You're going to get that same number of calls each frame. So let's just wrap it up now and we'll just do a quick overview in the order of execution that Unity performs. So first up, we have fixed update. It's called a set and guaranteed number of times per second, which can be customized inside the editor. This method is best used for physics calculations and movements. Next, we have update, which is called once per frame and this is going to be your object's main calculation source. And finally, we have late update, which is called after the update method is complete and is primarily used for actions that require previous calculations to be completed before we decide what action we want to take. And it is really just that simple. So I hope this helped you guys out and I hope that the update cycle in Unity makes a little bit more sense to you now, and I also hope that you weren't going to come into as many pitfalls as I did when I was first starting Unity. If you've learned something today, then drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us over on social media for more bite-sized Unity and C-sharp tips. I've been Mike for Comp3 Interactive, and I'll see you again soon.